Steve. Good afternoon. Um, thank you. I, I know I have to get us out of here soon, uh, so we will move quickly. But thank you for your patience and thanks for staying. I've had a great week. I've been in India all week. Uh, this is my second visit. Um, I was in Mumbai earlier this week. May I get the slides, please? I was in the in Mumbai earlier this week visiting with a group of industrial hygienists. Thank you. And Dr. Rajesh was there as well. And and he reminded us of um, thank you. Thank you. And he reminded us of the continuum of care. And I think the continuum of care is really reflected in this room, and it's really reflected by this association. And from my perspective, from a US perspective, uh, clearly the occupational physician lives in this er end of the, uh, of the flow here. And industrial hygiene belongs further upstream in prevention. And to some degree, uh, we share health promotion activities in the workplace. And I would even say that in the U.S., we're certainly still figuring out what that means for us. Um, I'm here on, on behalf of the American Industrial Hygiene Association this year. And uh, within that prevention realm, uh, we have, between the AIHA and the American Board of Industrial Hygiene, we really have this very shared mission of creating great occupational hygienists. And so I think our, um, our friends are going to introduce Mr. Srinivas Durgam. Uh, he's going to come up in just one second. I'm going to tell you about the American Industrial Hygiene Association. It's uh, an over 75-year-old organization with nearly 10,000 members, and our sole objective is to create community among professionals and to make them the best professionals that they can be for worker health protection. And we do this by continuing education, and training and webinars and we also run a laboratory accreditation business so when samples about the work environment are collected they are sent to an AIHA accredited laboratory and we run that program so that's a, just a few words about AIHA and Srinivas is going to tell you about uh, the accreditation side of occupational hygiene thanks Steve now I request uh, Mr. Srinivas and Durgan CIH and CSP he is the uh, director of American Board of Industrial Hygiene and uh, GE Global Research, working as a global industrial hygiene leader. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, good evening, folks. So carrying with the theme in terms of what American Board of uh, Industrial Hygiene, as Stephen Lacey mentioned, it's focused on ensuring that the credential practitioners really are the epitome of excellence in terms of the field that we practice. But that said, I wanted us to kind of reflect on many of you, those who are aware or have CIHs within their organizations or industrial hygienists may know of us as a, a, a body which focuses on exam, right? Test taking, is that what it's all about? I think it's important that we reflect on why do we do it? Any guesses on of the options that we have set forth, what may be the primary purpose for a credentialing body to exist? Any thoughts? That's a fair, fair way to look, right? All of the above. Uh, the key primary purpose that you have a credential org organization to exist is ensuring that the process really talks to about protecting the public health. Those who are within the scope of practice have the skills and the training necessary to, interest, uh, to ensure that the public health protection is, is a focus. And that reflects in our mission. Uh, 60 plus 1960s, so 57 odd years that we have been in existence, uh, our mission is focused on protecting health and ensuring that we meet the needs of employers. And that need of and protection for worker health is in India as well as US, right? It does not disappear. Uh, but a credential process is recognized by ANSI and NCAA. Uh, so it's important us to recognize that it is a, a certified process that we are talking about here. Uh, one part that I do want to ensure I share that with you, credential bodies within the United States are prohibited from engaging in any kind of practices that translates to supply demand equation. So growth mutually of the credential practitioners is absolutely the right thing to do because there is plenty for us to do collaboratively to kind of help and protect the worker health. 69, uh, 6,935 credential practitioners globally. Uh, CIH like myself, I actually have 
my mentee Indrajit Roy here, who is with GE, who's been uh, certified, and some who are on the way. Right now, at, uh, on an annual uh, year, we are at 17 credentials practitioner, uh, seven or so more from the last year. So it's a growing uh, thing that we are fostering and collaborating with others. And if I can spend a minute, I think this tends to move faster than I thought. Apologize on that piece. The first uh, lifetime achievement award that the board ever presented, which was in 2015, was actually offered to confer to Dr. Jas Singh, right? A credential practitioner who's been in practice for 35 plus year and has been a stalwart in kind of pushing and ensuring that the worker health and safety is a priority. So some who have blazed the way and who come from the same culture that we all represent here. In terms of growth, a quick set of statistics in terms of where India stands is number five, was number eight at one point. So it's a growing numbers that we want to ensure as an organization we can support. And, and pathways, which is I think a key part perhaps for interest to you, uh, it does require a basis uh, in having a credential degree followed by a certain work experience, which is typically a four-year period, followed by an exam that translates to a, a credential practitioner. But there are alternate pathways, which as an occupational health physician that you may be able to leverage, uh, which are, you already have, some of you have been in the scope of practice for more years than I have probably walked the earth. Uh, work experience, which is very much relevant in terms of how occupational hygiene is practiced in India, uh, followed with, with an exam that truly can get you to the certification path. Uh, I'd be happy to, uh, we do have some uh, certification giveaways in terms of if you are interested, I'd be happy to kind of step aside after we are done with the presentation to answer any questions that you may have. With that, I'll transfer over to Dr. Stephen Lacey to walk us through the shared mission again. Thank you, Srinivas. Um, I already flashed this slide a moment ago. I wanted to bring us back around to the topic at hand here. Um, I said that um, Dr. Rajesh, presented this uh, last week in Mumbai at the top of this week. And I think what I heard from him the other day at this conference was that if, if he uh, had his way, he would push all of the prevention onto the industrial hygienist, and that would give him more time to cure and to focus on health promotion. And, and I think that's a really powerful message for, uh, for this conference and the professionals that are in the room. I, I would like you to think about this for just one moment. Um, and think about the differentiation about the skill sets and how occupational physicians are different from industrial hygienists. So what are the skill sets that occupational physicians bring to the table versus what industrial hygienists bring to the table? How does each profession add value to the company and to worker health protection? These are some of the things that Srinivas and I came up with. I'm sure we have a longer list and perhaps you have additional items, but we talked about how the industrial hygienist is focused on quantifying the exposure and estimating risk and then designing systems and processes in order to control exposure and prevent it from happening in the first place. Whereas physicians are, of course, as we've been talking for the past two days, focused on disease surveillance, promoting healthy behaviors and lifestyles, and, and fixing patients that fall through the cracks when, when we can't do our job well. I would like, I have a couple uh, friends in the audience that are gonna help us out and they're going to hand out a note card and we're just gonna take three or four minutes with this and I would like to, to if we can hand out note cards to the participants, um, I would like you to answer this question for me and if you can talk to a neighbor um, about this, that would be fantastic. The question that I need help from, from the audience is, we have industrial hygienists and we have occupational physicians and there is some blur, but in some overlap, but not much. I want to ask the question, how can we partner better in order to eliminate workplace disease? So if you can write one idea on each post-it note on how industrial hygienists and occupational health physicians can work together. May I ask you to do that? We're, we're, some note cards are going around and I'd like you to just write down one or two ideas. We're going to take about two or three minutes to do this, please. The room should be getting very noisy any minute now. I'm, I'm looking to you to, to talk amongst yourselves and write down some ideas on how hygiene and medicine can participate together.
I'm going to give you about one more minute to talk to your neighbor about oh, answering no, this question, right. please. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Another five minutes, Steve. Sorry. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. I, I'm going to wrap this up by saying that we've started this partnership, and this partnership is, is taking place through an MOU written between AIHA and your organization in order to get this partnership launched. So I will leave you with this set of uh, bullet points for you to look at as we start to clear the room. Uh, these are the ideas that industrial hygienists are focusing on, not just today, but in the next five to ten years. So thanks for your time and thanks for your patience, and thank you for having me this week. Yeah.